So let's look at rank 1 approximation. Here's a picture. Think of this picture as a matrix. Think of this red line as representing the jth column, so that the matrix can be thought of as consisting of n columns. And in that case, the ij entry in this matrix is simply the ij pixel for this picture. What if we look at the first four columns in this picture, which I've denoted here with different colors? If we plot the values of those pixels as a function of where you are in the column, so this here goes down the column, then what you notice is that these first four columns in this picture are remarkably similar. So here I'm plotting the value. And you notice that you know the fourth column or so is slightly different in this region. But if you ask the question, how similar are these vectors, you notice that they are quite similar. Now, if instead you take a column that's somewhat farther along, then the green line here shows that the similarity is much less. And then if you look at four columns right next to each other much farther along, then you notice that these vectors are quite similar again. So what does this mean? Well, take your picture, think of it as matrix B, where the ij entry is a pixel in the picture. Partition this matrix by columns. You all have been taught how to slice and dice, and we're slicing and dicing by columns here. And then let's take the very first column to be the representative vector for all of the columns of B. If you look at the projection of the first column onto the span of A, this is the matrix that projects onto the span of A. Plug in B0. Well, we know that B0 is just the vector A. And of course, you just get vector A back, because if you take vector A and, and, and project it onto the span of A, you should get that vector back. It's already in that space. Now, if instead you take the next column, then what you would expect when you project that is to get a vector back that's very close to A. Why? Because we observed that B1 was very similar to B0. A is just the vector B0. And therefore, you would expect if you project B1 onto the vector A, you would get approximately A back. And actually, you would get approximately B1 back because they're so similar. You can do this for every one of the columns. So here we look at the columns of matrix B. Remember, we busted up B by columns. And we're projecting each of those columns onto the space spanned by A. And if the columns are very similar to A, then that would be a good approximation. And if the columns are not very similar, then it would not be a very good approximation. Now, you all have learned how to do partitioned matrix matrix multiplication. And one of the things that you learned, as a matter of fact, this is how we defined matrix, uh, matrix matrix multiplication, is that if you have a matrix and you multiply it times another matrix, then that's the same as multiplying each of the individual columns by that matrix. And notice that here we start with each individual column having been multiplied by the same matrix. And therefore, we, go, we can go in the opposite direction and pull that matrix out. And then we can take all of these and put them back together again as the picture B. Then we get this right here. We can then take this and say, hmm, what do we get if we do this? Well, this here is a vector times a matrix multiply. We saw in week four that that's just a row vector. And then this is just a scalar. If you do a scalar times a row vector, you just get a row vector. So what this really is, is just a column vector times a row vector. And let's call that row vector y. Well, y transpose, which means that the vector is just y. So now we notice that when we project each of the columns onto the space spanned by A, we can think of the result as being that vector A multiplied by a row vector. And if you do that, then you get this approximation right here. 
And what you notice is that from column to column, there's a lot of similarity with the first column now. And why is that? Well, that's because when you do an outer product like that, each column is just this scalar times the column. And therefore, each of these columns now is just a scalar multiple of the first column that we used for our space onto which we projected. So, in summary, if we're given a vector A and a matrix B, then we can approximate our matrix B as an outer product with the vector A. And the best such approximation given that we fix that vector A involves this vector Y, which is computed as such. Each column in A times Y transpose in this outer product equals just the projection of the corresponding column of B onto the span of A. And this is known as a rank one approximation of B. And in one of the exercises, you will be asked to prove that this matrix has rank one. Notice that this is not necessarily the best rank one approximation. It is the best rank one approximation if you fix your A to be the column vector in the outer product.